Man of Maranatha, Detroit, Michigan, where everything depends upon a proper understanding of Genesis 3.15, where the Most High God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Her seed's heel will bruise your seed's skull. Astro theology. So when I look at every... When you're able to consider that it's an astro theological book, it seems as though the Gentiles, the ones who are really smart, the ones who are the so-called gatekeepers, the one who the ones who have been keeping this information, you know, hidden. They they have like been initiated into they've been initiated through rituals and they use symbols to communicate with each other. So, for example, you know, Shell gas station. That's that's somewhat a sun worship. Um, McDonald's, the, the Golden Arches, that's sun worship. Sunoco, <laughs> sun worship. Target, you know, the zero with the little dot in the middle, sun worship. So when you're able to see, it's like the whole world is operating on this, these, uh, un this understanding of it's all about the sun. That you just really have to wonder. I mean, before you all, you may have always said, "Okay, they're evil. They're the devil. They're demonic." But if they've been operating. You know, how could you say strictly biblical? I mean, because Bible, the Holy Bible is Helios Biblios. That's sun book. I mean, how do we know? How do you know that, you know, you're you've been reading this book as a Christian for all of these years, you know, thinking Jesus is the you know a person. And I'm not saying that he wasn't. But, you know, if the true narrative of the book is supposed to be about sun worship. Or the importance of the sun, or the 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 position of the sun, is not to. I'm not trying to take away from God. I'm not trying to take away from salvation. I'm not trying to take away from any ethical or moral values that you have uh, accumulated or you have lived by because you have read this book. I'm not trying to destroy that or take away or discredit that. But if they have been, even Toyota. Toyota is, uh, I think that's Saturn. Mazda, that's a constellation. Audi, that's a constellation. Ford Focus, what are you focusing on? The Ford Escape, where are you trying to escape from? Explorer, where are you going to? Traveler, Excursion, GM, Saturn. Oh, man. So, if this book is about, if this whole existence that we're dealing with is about the sun, I mean, what's new under the sun, y'all? If ain't nothing new, it's just a different way of telling it. And if a different way of telling it is really just a different way, but the, the subject matter is really the same, what is this? BP. That's a sun. How do we know that you are really focused on the reality of the matter, the truthfulness of the matter? I mean, it's like, what is truth? Burger King, sun. Wow. I mean, for the scripture say, says that even Christ said to Pontius Pilate, what is truth? See, just because you can quote scriptures doesn't mean that you know the truth. You know what the scriptures are saying because you're quoting it. But what does it really mean? See, if I if I were to tell you a parable, then you should be able to, by knowing the truth, express you know, a truck just passed me. Sun. 
heating and cooling and it has a, a, a an, an image of a sun it, it's really it can get a little bit you know crazy when you are seeing things that like nobody else can see when you're able to put things together that no one else wants to put the time into Midas muffler sun So, you know, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say is, well, uh, uh, I think his name is Peter, Peter Ferguson. He, oh, I'm sorry, no, it was somebody who sent me a video. I'm sorry, I don't remember the person's name, but they gave me a thumbs up. And, you know, they were saying that, you know, Christmas is like the day the sun died. And, you know, it rose three days later. And, you know, I understand that. I knew I know that. But when we look at Daniel and it says that the man of perdition will change laws and times. Okay, December 21st. If that's when the day the sun had died and then the 25th is when it rose. Okay, fine. The sun died on a certain day and it rose on a certain day. However, Yeshua, the historical person, if you're still looking at it from a historical perspective, he was born September the 11th. He was born six months after John, Yohanneken. See, when you say certain names, you are presenting certain frequencies. So that's why so, so many people are getting caught up and get upset when they're like, you know, what's his name? Or do you know his son's name? Because the name presents a frequency. And if you know the name and you say the name, there's power in that name. You can say this name and you can cast out demons in this name. But a demon might recognize that name, but then wants to challenge you because it's like Peter and Paul, I know, but you, I don't. And that demon might begin to attack you. Now, whether you look at that demon as being something of a frequency or a literal historical person, that's for you to decide. But flesh and blood, I don't wrestle with, but powers and principalities, I do. So I, I would rather be concerned about the frequency than making sure that this frequency doesn't get through me or affect me. Because Christ was like able to take on a different type of frequency, you know, after death. That he's able to walk through doors and walk through walls and he's able to eat. You know? So if he had if he's of a different frequency and that's something that we hope to aspire to, we got to make sure that our vessels are pure. Our vessels are clean. Because this is all we have is our bodies. That's all we have. In fact, when we have the proper understanding of this book and how the sun affects this book, many of us are going to be transformed in the twinkling of an eye, but transformed to what? And what for? What's the purpose? We're being transformed so we can get a new body. Don't you want a new body? Aren't you tired of the body that you have? Isn't there something about the body that you don't like? You're getting old because you're under this sun. The sun is heating up quick and all of our works are going to be tested by fire. If, if we still have this Greek, mythology, Greek mythological aspect or understanding of God that, you know, he's... he's uh, white haired beard bearded the image of a father of you know wisdom sitting on the throne okay you know all i know is that every knee every thought every head every everything everything is going to be under the subjecting of god and if no man knows god's mind you know no one wants to perform his will 
Why should I believe anything that you have to say? The only thing I'm going to believe what you have to say is if you're quoting the book. And if you're quoting the book correctly, then I am going to use 2 Timothy 3.16 to, you know, reproof and correct and see if what you're presenting is true. So if David did cut off Goliath's head and took it to Jerusalem, hey, uh, you know, that's pretty clever and I'm going to continue to listen to you. Because what I'm saying is that Genesis 3.15 isn't exclusively about Goliath and and Yeshua's foot being over his skull. It's an astrological story. Genesis 3.15 is an astrological story. Now, how are you going to see that? Because God used, as the scriptures say, he used the sun, the moon, and the stars, constellations, as signs. December 25th, uh, hold on, I think it's December 21st, the sun is like 30, 30 degrees. There's a measurement that's equated to the sun being 30 degrees. Above, below, retrograde, I don't know. But I do know that within Freemasonry, the highest degree is supposedly the 33rd degree. Now, there's something there, and I keep asking people, bring something to the table so that we can all reason to, you know, get this together so that we can be a community. You know, we don't have to necessarily live together, but we can be a community to, to be on one understanding so that we are on one accord. Because what, what doctrine are you of? What what faith are you of? What faith are you practicing? Is it your own interpretation? I mean, are you really... Ex are you expecting a man to come out of the sky? Or is the vision like the Son of Man? What is it that you're expecting? Because as a man thinketh, that shall he be. And what you think, if wickedness comes in the form in which you have an understanding and your understanding was, it had errors in it, then you're going to be following a lie. If you, ex if you expect God to come in your, to your level of understanding, Men know that. And men can manipulate. The wolves can manipulate the false narrative. So much that you know that this Messiah is going to be coming in the sky, right? If they produce a false narrative that says, hey, Christ is coming. Look in the sky. Should you believe it? The wolves have been reading the book too. The wolves are trying to keep you in the matrix. The wolves are trying to keep you in the matrix through their frequency. The wolves, the, 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 the meal that the wolves are preparing for you, that frequency is in the foods too. It's what you eat. There's blood, there's power and dunamis in the blood. Blood, the blood has life. If you continue to eat pork, pork has a certain type of frequency that you might not should you should you might not you might want to consider not eating it because it has a certain frequency. It's not so much you don't eat it because it's not good, it's not flavorful, but it has a certain frequency. The things that you eat have a certain frequency. And with the blood being in meats, it has a certain frequency. That's why it says you should really cook it. It has nothing to do with just mere obedience. But if you are of God, then obey God and do what he says. 
Because if you're looking at it from, you know, from a left mind and you should really be looking at it from a right mind, you're wrong. If you should be looking at it from a left mind and you're looking at it from a right mind, you're wrong. If you've always thought God was masculine and you never considered the femininity and it's in the fifth law, you've been wrong. But understanding God that he's masculine and he might have a wife or he's feminine, that's not the point. There's something bigger going on that you need to consider. But we have been we've been locked in this frequency by uh, under these spells to we have been producing false narratives. We have been creating uh, idols. For example, you know, I don't know if I, I want to say I'm struggling with it, but I have prayed for certain things. I'm talking about I have prayed for a specific specific things that you know for some people it's no big deal but for me no buddy something ain't right something isn't right because if I can think something to an existence you know it didn't just pop up like that but there are things that I've prayed for or things that I've asked for and I've gotten that's a problem because that's a lot of power you know and now these things are in a sense, you know, I'm wondering, are they uh, idols? Because I have this and you don't, you know, it produces pride. But when I understand when I, I, Solomon, he basically said and he kind of comforted me in this. He's like, look, enjoy life. And if you ask God of something and he gives you something good, just don't put that thing before God. Now, yeah, you have to. It, there comes a time where you got to sell all you have. But um, I mean, what 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 is life about? You know, it's about experiencing it. And sometimes you might need a car or you might like a motorcycle or you might like to eat steak or you might like to live in a loft. You don't want a two story house. You just want to be on the first floor. You, your legs, your knees are bad. I don't know, but sometimes when you have such a relationship with, and I use this loosely, you have a relationship with God or you have a, a, a relationship with this frequency and you, you, you start acquiring things like Cain, Cain means acquire, you know, you got to be on balance. And I think that the things that I've asked for, the things that I've acquired, I have used that not as a means of, you know, idolatry or pridefulness, but I've used it to. It, it has been an evidence that God exists or it's an evidence that if my people would just humble themselves and pray. OK, I pray. And he's answered. So what am I to do now? Keep praying for things. Or do I want a, a, a deeper relationship with them and say, OK, I'm tired of the things. Give me wisdom. Give me an understanding. You know, the things of this world, the nice, the wines and the foods and the traveling and, you know, all of that stuff. You get massages and pedicures and manicures and you get your hair done. Fine. All that stuff is for the body. But what are you really doing for the soul? How are you preparing yourself? How are you preparing yourself spiritually for what's about to happen? God is about to make a new heaven and new earth. Are y'all really ready for that? I mean, will you make the transition? A friend of mine was just telling me, you know, and I don't put it past them, that there's there are wolves that are making certain frequencies that once that Oh my goodness, once that uh, switch is flicked, people start defecating on themselves. Sounds and frequencies have they have a they have a uh, what do you call a uh, a reaction to us. 
I mean, when the Israelites, when they went into battle, didn't they have some music? Then they beat that drum. A drum has a different effect on the body than a guitar. You start hitting that bass, huh, it's over for some people. Certain people deal with frequencies in a different, different way. When God, what we call God, this term God or Elohim, or if you want to say Yahweh or Yeshua, whatever name, I really don't care. But whatever happens, the the entity behind the voice, Hashem, the entity behind the voice, when that entity speaks, that consciousness speaks, it's not coming back void. And if you're not prepared, if, you're, if your antenna isn't up and you're not, you're not ready to receive this, uh, this message, you know, something got to go down. Sin and God cannot coexist in the same temple. Therefore, brothers, many of you are sick and have died. Be careful of how you take the Lord's Supper. When you're eating this information, when you're digesting this information, it is a metaphor. But when you're digesting this truth and you're trying to really get it, you can't continue to do things that you used to do. You can't even think about these things that you used to do because you're a new creature. Your, your consciousness is new, but you're about to get a new body. And if you get a new body and you got the same consciousness, you know, it's not going to work. It's just like here in Detroit. These kids, they're driving around in these uh, Hellcats and these uh, high powered uh, cars. When I was growing up, yeah, we all wanted an old school. And yeah, we put some, you know, nitrous to it and, you know, put a cam in it and, you know, made it fast and whatnot. But we weren't driving up and down the street, you know, the side streets where the kids in the neighborhood were. It's foolishness. You put a child behind a, a Hellcat. All he's going to do is mimic what he has seen on TV, the fast and the furious. These streets out here, they're real. People's lives are at stake. But when you keep giving children a lot of information and they really don't know how to digest it, it can be very detrimental to their souls, to their livelihoods. We are all children of God. Just because we're an adult doesn't mean, you know, a certain age does not mean that we are fully equipped to uh, embrace and fulfill God's word. How old was Abraham? How old was Sarah? We have to really control our bodies, but more or less we got to control our minds. And most people are not ready to prepare the way, straighten the path for the most high God who is coming. The king is coming. Do you know that? Your king, your creator is coming. But before he comes, his presence is coming. And when his presence, you know, it's like you, when you used to watch the Mike Tyson, your, the anticipation, you know, Mike Tyson about to come. But then as soon as Mike Tyson hit the, uh, the walkway, started coming down and you, you could just feel the energy and I wasn't even there but it's the energy that you feel that you know Tyson is about to enter the ring well guess what the king is here the king is here but before he comes his presence is going to come and his presence is going to affect us these are just the beginning birth pains we are we haven't even all of this stuff we've been going through since you know 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. This ain't even it. <laughs> this isn't even it, y'all. It's about to go down. And I hope that someone is listening that they are able to slap themselves and wake themselves up to make sure that they are not drunk, still drunk on Babylon's wine. If they're still following this Jesus narrative, Yahshua narrative, we don't know. Put all of our thoughts at the at the foot of God and say, 
Lord, I don't know, but all I do know is that you exist. I don't know if you're masculine or feminine, but if you are, I accept it. If I hear it, I'll test it. I'll study it. I just want the truth, Lord. I don't want no problems with you. I just want to be be around you. I just want to see your backside. I I know I can't uh, fathom and understand everything about your 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 greatness. I'm good just to know that you exist because you've been keeping this earth pretty tight. You know, you've been keeping the moon and the sun and the stars and all of that stuff in order. And I think if you can do that, you can have some control over my life. All I'm asking you, Lord, is please have mercy on me. I'm not worthy. I am not worthy to see anything about you. But I think thank you lord that you would give me just the opportunity just to see that's all i want to do is just to see your glory after i see it you can count me out just bring me take me push me wherever you want me to be and i'm just hoping that you will have mercy and kindness that wherever you put me i'll be happy with it that's all i want to do lord i don't want no problems with you none and if i've done anything to offend you i'm sorry i'm pathetic however you want to phrase it i just don't want no problems with you my arms are too short to box with you i ain't even trying to box with you i want to revere you i want to respect you and i won't put respect on your name i don't even want to know your name because if i knew your name i would probably mess it up but all i'm asking you to do is to just be patient with me. You have been patient with me. You've been a merciful God, but please continue. Don't stop being loving and kind to me because I need it. Without you, ain't no me. I need you. Please, please, in the name of your son, because you said you're going to send an angel, do whatever he says. He will forgive you of your sins because your name is in him. If he is the one that fulfilled Genesis 3.15, I might not know his name. I might not know his name, but I know what he did. And I know more importantly is that you predicted what he did before he did it. And I want to trust in that being, that entity, that consciousness that was able to predict, knew that it was going to happen, and it actually happened. So I am the man of Marionette of Detroit, Michigan. I hope that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful Sabbath. Peace.